Now let's go back to Syria and joining us from Damascus is Bouthana Shaban, a political and media advisor to President Assad, one of the president's inner circle, very close to him. Uh, Dr. Shaban, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, now, thank you. I'm wondering whether you in Damascus are at basically expecting the American Congress to vote for action. Well, uh, we really don't know, but I think whatever the American Congress voted for, I don't think it has the right to lead an aggression against a country that's a member of the United Nations. And by so, so doing, they are really undermining the international order. After two world wars, the world has reached a, an international order where no country can lead an aggression against any country without the Security Council approval. But the problem, and now Dr. Shaban, the problem, is, the problem is that one of those world wars, the first one, gas was used, poison gas. And that's the allegation against Syria tonight. Have you investigated the, exactly, the, have you investigated the chemical weapons attack on the 21st of August? Exactly, as you said, it's the allegation. And unfortunately, a, a country as important as the United States waits for the UN Commission to arrive to Damascus. And on the same day they started their work, they utter allegations from Washington that it is the Syrian government who used chemical weapons. Let them show us the evidence. The one who claims, the one who, who alleges that the Syrian government has used uh, these should show the evidence to the world. I mean, they, they are really... Well, well increasingly, the world increasingly they, have, they have shown the evidence to the world. I mean, we've seen an enormous amount of video footage from many different uh, perspectives. And most particularly tonight, there is the, the German intelligence claim that they intercepted a telephone call in which Hezbollah were talking to the Iranian embassy in Damascus and actually overheard them discussing <laughs> what had happened on the 21st of August and blaming President Assad. You know, for, for Western countries uh, that lead research and science to say that they overheard a conversation over the telephone is really laughable, you know? That the, is this an evidence? They took all their evidence from Facebook and, and YouTube. And if they are really keen to investigate what happened to the Syrian people, we send them hard evidence three months ago about Khan al-Assal, and they prevented the, the UN Commission to come and investigate. You know, this is one link in a series where uh, they have been uh, attacking Syria and preventing a political solution in Syria. And every time a UN commission or an Arab commission comes, a massacre is perpetrated in one way or another but in order to put the blame on the Syrian government. Can you be absolutely certain that it wasn't a mistake or perhaps a rogue element within uh, your forces who will have done this thing? There's no, uh, you know, there's no mistake on our side. It is our people who are here, and uh, uh, the whole story that is uh, promoted by the U.S. Uh, has, is baseless. Where is the report on uh, mass destruction weapon in Iraq? It has been locked in for the next 60 years in the United Nations. Why? Because there's no evidence. They are repeating the same thing again in Syria. Dr. They Shaban, lead aggressions you, against country. But you would have such a strong Sorry. argument if your government, if President Assad's government, had not itself killed so many of your own people. That is, that is what is being alleged, that so many people have been killed Sorry. by Syria, so many Syrians have been killed by Syrian forces answering to the command of President Assad and been tortured where not killed. Well, the West should ask this question, why did this happen in Syria two and a half years ago? It was Qatar and Turkey who were leading this aggression against Syria by sending uh, Al-Qaeda elements, money, armaments. Now it is Saudi Arabia and Turkey and the United States and France. And this, is, this aggression has been continuing against Syria for the last two and a half years. We tried every possible way to reach a political solution. We announced on every juncture, we are ready to go to Geneva, we are ready to sit around the table without any precondition. We changed the constitution, we are ready to change the constitution again. But those who are targeting the identity of Syria, the people of Syria, the land of Syria, do not want any solution. They only want to lead an aggression 
against Syria as they are trying to do now. Uh, Dr. Savan, there will be many people who will accept undoubtedly that Saudi Arabia and Qatar in particular are indeed funding jihadists who are coming into your country. But the fundamental issue is that this started with the repression of opposition to President Assad and the repression with weapons which killed. If that had not happened, you would have a very great deal more support. John, believe me, the, those who are killing the Syrian people, raping women, uh, kidnapping uh, Christian uh, clerks, uh, you know, they, these are not opposition. These are Al-Qaeda. The same people who, who in March were on the London tube and who killed British people, the same people who were in 9-11 in, in New York and who killed American people, they are the same people in Mali, the same people in Libya, the same people in Iraq, the same people in Syria. Well, Believe me, we have no problem with the opposition whatsoever. Dr. Shabat, let's, let's try to see what, what alternative there could be to action against Syria. Okay. Mr. Cameron tried to get a vote okay. for action. He was defeated in his own parliament. Yeah. This is how democracy works in this country. And beyond that, the people in this country, by every opinion poll testing, do not want Syria to be attacked. But what could you say to Mr Cameron now? How could he use his offices as a man who will not be involved in military action against Syria? What could you say to him which would perhaps change the dynamic here, offer an opportunity? You talk about being prepared to talk around the table, but it's conditional upon President Assad remaining President Assad. I can say to Mr Cameron, first, I salute the British people and I greet the British House of Commons who voted against the war. I can say to him that war only creates war and violence. And I can say to him that we live in the same international community. The violence that will be started in Syria today will be there in London and in, in New York tomorrow. What you can do is to join forces with Syria against Al-Qaeda, with the Syrian people. Reach a political solution around the table and let us work together to make the world a better place Dr. for Shaban, all of us. Dr. Shaban, tonight in Damascus, the psychological pressure, the physical pressure on you personally and on the other people, and you can see people moving about in the, the pictures behind you, the, the truth is this is a horrible, horrible moment. What toll is it taking on President Assad himself, on you, on the ordinary people in Damascus? Yeah. This moment is horrible because we see our country is threatened. We see that an aggression is being prepared against Syria, who has always been a peaceful country, who has never led an aggression against any country, who has always been a haven for people who had been kicked from other countries throughout history. That's why you find all ethnicities, all religion uh, in Syria. You know that they the, the, came from the American, all over the place. The American Defense Secretary has said tonight the attack will not be a pinprick. It will be a major assault. Are people going to flee? Are people going to leave the city? What, what are you going to do uh, when the most powerful country on earth rains this kind of power down on you? You know, John, I'm speaking to you from Damascus. And Damascus is 6,000 years old. It is the eldest inhabited, continuously inhabited city in the world. The Syrian people will never leave. They will always be here. But those who lead aggression will leave, and they will reap the results of, the, of this aggression. This doesn't mean that we are not concerned, and we are not against aggression, and we will not defend ourselves. But what can you do if the country that claims to be democratic ignores Security Council, ignores the world opinion, ignores the American public opinion, Dr. and Bethana, wants to lead aggression. Dr. Bethena Shaban, I'm sorry, sorry to leave it there, but our satellite is running out. But thank you very, very much indeed for joining us from Damascus. Thank you, John. Uh,